Hey everybody, Chief Meteorologist Brad Petovich here. We're talking snow for Sunday, but as I've been talking about for the last several days, not a big deal. We're still looking at a rain to flurry mix. There will be some snow in the area, certainly a chance of novelty flurries, but zero impacts on the roads. I will show you the area though. I do think if there's gonna be a surprise burst of snow, I'll show you where that is. Let's start wide. We'll start with the surface map. Kind of shows you everything you need to see right here. So we'll, we'll play this and then pause it right about here so we're going to go into the overnight hours we've got a front along the coast but the cold air here this is why the system is not really the perfect snow setup because the cold air is coming in at the same time that the low pressure is trying to form typically i'd love to see the cold air in place and the moisture get thrown back to the west that's just not happening with this setup so we'll go through time and you can see the rain developing late tonight early tomorrow morning so i'll back this up a little bit here um, and we'll kind of show you where this is coming in from so you can see Overnight tonight, it starts as rain because temperatures will be in the upper 30s, low 40s. Not exactly warm, but above freezing. So we'll likely see those temperatures kind of hold steady there for the overnight hours. And you see the moisture by tomorrow morning. So you'll likely wake up to rain as the cold air is trying to move in. The low pressure on the coast begins to build. You'll see that low pressure. See this front here? This is the cold air trying to come in at the same time the low is developing. So the cold air down here could make a very narrow band of snow on the back side. But there's two areas that have the highest chance of that happening down here believe it or not to our south and to our east not so much over us doesn't mean we can't see some snow but even in those places the accumulations would be light but those would be the surprise burst areas uh, down to our south and east so you can see as we go into the afternoon it ends as a little bit of snow and then pushes off to the east so that's a look at the system you know why is it not a bigger system for us well because the low and the cold air don't really get going until it's already past us. That's why not going to end up being a big deal. The system just did not come together exactly to our west and then move through. So I'll show you what that looks like. So this is kind of getting into the weeds of the meteorology, but you can see the disturbances coming down. Big dip in the jet stream, vorticity here coming in. One thing we look for for a snowstorm is you want this to be what we call neutral tilt. So basically think of a V and you'd have it straight up and down or you want a little bit of a negative tilt back this direction, which would give you a good chance of snow, because what that does is that wraps in cold air and moisture together. In this case, the cold air is kind of chasing the moisture until, watch what happens, as this begins to push off just to our east, right about here, look at the orientation. I'll move my head out of the way. You could see the orientation of this is more of like this. So a little bit of a negative tilt to it, um, as it pushes off to the east with the vorticity. You can see it really cranks up. And see how that happens just as it moves past the western Carolinas and kind of happens in the eastern part of the state? That's why this isn't coming there. If, if this were to happen back here, like if it was over the Mississippi River tilting back, then we would have our legit snow chance. So right now, we're looking at just rain to flurry. So what will it look like? So let's dive right into the future cast here. I'll play this tonight. I'm going to stop it ooh, roughly around 6 a.m. tomorrow, very similar to what we had. You can see it was mostly rain throughout here. I'll pause it again right here. This is tomorrow morning, 8 a.m. So let me back this up. You see the rain coming in tonight. Again, mostly rain. Look at the temperatures, 40s. But as we go to tomorrow, the cold air is trying to move in on the back side. And you can see at the very tail end of this, sometime around the middle of the day, there's our change to maybe a little bit of snow. Look at the temperatures though, above freezing. This is why it's zero travel issues during the day tomorrow. You see the snow, quick burst there. Basically a short range is sometime around midday being our best chance of a burst of snow. So think around lunchtime. And again, if it snows heavy enough, even with temperatures above freezing, it will stick on grassy surfaces, but not the road. Remember, the surface temperature isn't as important as the temperature above our heads. If the freezing level is close enough to the ground, even if it's 40 degrees at the ground, you can get snow. Think about taking ice out of your freezer and throwing it out in the yard on a hot summer day. You could still have ice outside when it's 90 degrees if the ice came from a cold location. In this case, the snow above our heads is coming from a really cold location. It's just close enough to the ground that it doesn't melt in time, but still makes it to the surface. But because the temperature is above freezing, it stays mostly, mostly wet roads, right? It only sticks real quickly to the you know, roof of your car, maybe your deck, your, your lawn furniture and then it moves out so if we're looking for a surprise burst i think it's going to be over in here because the temperatures are a little closer to freezing and it's closer to sunset so the opportunity for that burst to stick a little bit more right there by by dinner time is probably just to our east and then it moves off so 
How much snow are we talking about? Let's take a quick look. So in full transparency, I'll show you what the model I just showed you, which is our short range kind of rapid refresh model we run internally. You can see the totals that it's spitting out. So I don't agree completely with this, but it kind of shows that possibility of a one inch burst around the, the, the triangle area. But for most of us, it's a trace to a tenth of an inch. That's about it. There just isn't a whole lot there. So I hand drew my own map, which I always like to do. This is kind of what I think is going to happen because this will take into account the mixing, the melting, some other things that will deter some of those totals. Remember, when you're looking at just model guidance, you can't look at it that well. You got to kind of take it to a grain of salt. Also, no, it doesn't account for other things like melting, compaction, and mixing. So when you look at this, I think flurries across the Piedmont range of snow, but look at the totals. A trace to a tenth of an inch, maybe, maybe a half an inch or more up towards the triangle area. You're really looking at the potential for probably, you know, a dusting to at, at most a tenth, maybe a half an inch could be a burst. Um, and again, remember, this would only stick to grassy surfaces. You're looking at maybe some rooftops, that kind of thing. But all in all, it's a novelty flake. Temps are above freezing, so no travel impacts. But as we go into Sunday night, anything wet from rain and or melted snow could refreeze. That could be the real issue as we go into uh, Monday morning. Now, again, here's my timeline. This is for the Charlotte metro area in particular. You see rain in the morning. Uh, there's going to be a mix. It's right around the middle of the day. That's our best chance with temperatures only basically in the upper 30s, maybe mid 30s. So right now my snow meter, it's a one because the impacts are so low. Yes, it's a legit chance of snow, but it's not going to accumulate much. And because most of us are just going to have fun with this on social media, it's a Sunday, lots of great picture taking. All in all, I don't think it's a big deal. If you want to see the breakdown probabilistically, I love the math of this. There's a 40% chance we get nothing, another 40% chance of a trace to attempt. So if you combine those, there's an 80% chance it's a tenth of an inch or less, which is barely measurable, a dusting. Outside chance we get, you know, a measurable to an inch, and there's only a 5% or less chance this gets above one inch for most of the Piedmont, including the Charlotte area. So that's the latest. I'll keep you updated. It's going to become a radar tracking um, adventure as we go into tomorrow and looking at those temperatures. So stay tuned. It should be a fun Sunday. No big, in, big deal. But remember, snow is normal here. This is supposed to happen. We average over three inches every winter. It's only been two winters with no snow, and that was two winters ago. We never want to see that again because we want to have a normal winter for once. Not a crazy one, not a warm one, not a cold one, just normal.